I had a conversation with a DJ today who is a full-time something else and a part-time DJ, and they were asking me, you know, are there any services out there where you can just have them book gigs for you and you pay them a percentage? I'm not aware of any gig mills like that, but I did have some other tips for him. He thought they were pretty good, so I thought I'd go ahead and share them with the class here. So first of all, I mean, I've been in this position before where I was doing something else full-time, kind of doing this on a very part-time basis, and in my situation, I wanted to go full-time. And I wasn't sure exactly how to go about it. What I didn't want to do is become that Me Too DJ out there. And what I mean by that is when it came to my marketing or getting my name out there, hey, I'm a wedding DJ too. Hey, I've got all the latest songs too. Hey, I get everybody dancing too. I've got to compete with everybody else who says that on Wedding Wire or We DJ or The Knot or whatever services are out there. That doesn't seem like something that's going to work out too well. So what I thought about doing was making myself valuable to someone, which is what you do whenever you're trying to market goods or services anyway, right? You look for a need that you can fill, and you fill it. So that's what I did. First thing I did was I went on all of the sites for DJs. And I looked for DJs that were in the Chicago area, but advertised for Milwaukee as well, or Wisconsin. If you don't know the demograph here, Chicago and Milwaukee are 80 miles apart, but they might as well be 1,000 miles apart. You typically don't cross borders, and that's not me personally or DJs. That's anybody. It, you, people from Wisconsin think they need a passport to go to Chicago sometimes. It's, it's goofy. So Chicago DJs don't particularly want to take a lot of work in Milwaukee because they don't know the terrain. They don't know the demographic. It's very different for weddings as well. It's not the same thing. The, the clients ask for different things, and there's different traditions and structures and all of those things. Even music is different. So if I can find a DJ in Chicago that's advertising for Wisconsin, I can call them and say, hey, look, I'm a DJ in Wisconsin. I know this area really well. Are you turning down work for the area? Because if you are, stop. Take it, because I can take care of that work for you. And it worked great. They're, they were turning down a lot of work, come to find out. It didn't cost them anything to advertise in Milwaukee, really. Not much more, or the Wisconsin, southeastern Wisconsin area, but they weren't comfortable taking the work, but if they had a guy to take it on, perfect. And I was that guy. That was one method that I used. Another method that I used, and this isn't going to be the same in every area, but there are entertainment agencies and there are DJ agencies. I didn't want to talk to any of the DJ agencies in my area because, again, I'd just be another me too guy. They're a DJ mill. They're DJs are us. They've got, you know, 50 DJs that they work with. I'm just another guy. Hey, I'm a DJ too. So what I thought would be interesting would be to go with another kind of entertainment agency, like a band agency. Because they're focused on bands, but if for some reason their band isn't available or they can't pay the several thousand dollars that a band requires, maybe they can flip that client into a DJ and book a gig. So I called them and said, hey, I know you book bands, but I'm a DJ. And if I can take any of the flips that you do, let me know. And sure enough, that worked out great too. Another thing that I did was I looked for the DJ in town that was doing mad work. The single owner operator. The guy. And I contacted him. Very humble. Because this is an ego driven thing sometimes. And I just simply said, hey look. If you ever need any help, let me know. How can I help you? Just, just write my name down. Put on a post-it. If you need a DJ, an emergency situation or whatever, or something comes up where you need somebody, maybe I can help. That worked out. Now, more recently, I had an empty summer. I think I've talked about this before. And it was because I didn't take work. And I did that intentionally. And, and uh, the reason I did it was because I wanted to spend time with my dad. Unfortunately, my dad died in June. And, and then I had, like, this empty summer. I had nothing going on. And... Uh, Expenses were popping up. So, you know, what I could have done was fronted on social media and made it look like I was doing fine, made it look like everything was cool, 
and I was busy and I didn't need anybody's help. But I didn't do that. I did the opposite. I said, hey, look, I've got no work this summer. I'm free. So if you have any overflow, let me know. And my DJ network of people here in Milwaukee took care of me. I was busy all summer. And I, that's something I could do every week if I wanted to. I mean, if you think about it, if I'm free this Friday, what does it take for me to post something on Thursday night and say, hey, look, Friday night, I'm free. My truck's loaded and I'm ready to go. If any emergencies pop up, think about me. Believe me, the day my dad died, if I would have seen that post on Facebook, I called them and had them take care of the gig that I had to do. So whether you're part-time or full-time, this might help you. And I hope this advice helps somebody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.